Welcome back to Jeeping for Beginners, folks. Once again, my name is Josh, and today we have a very serious topic that we want to talk about, and that is the most overlooked maintenance item that is under the hood of your Jeep. Now, I don't care which model you're driving, Cherokee, Grand Cherokee, Wagoneer, Gladiator, Wrangler, doesn't matter. Every one of them is equipped pretty much the same way under the hood, and this item is, like I said, the number one most ignored. Now, I don't know if it's because People think that uh, mechanics are trying to rip them off or they just don't feel that it's that important until something major happens and it fails. But I'm here to tell you it's extremely important and we're going to discuss why ignoring this could cause such major failures and major problems with your vehicle as time goes on. So stick around. This is important and I think you're going to enjoy this. Welcome back to the channel, folks. Once again, my name is Josh, and today we are discussing the number one most overlooked item under the hood of just about any automobile that is on the road. Now, granted, this channel is dedicated to Dodge Chrysler Jeep products and Jeeps in particular, but it doesn't matter what you drive. If you're tuning in with a Kia, a Toyota, even a Mercedes or a BMW, that is perfectly fine. You should pay attention to this information because it could actually save you thousands of dollars in the long run. Now, of course, what we're talking about today is the main drive serpentine belt that is under the hood of your vehicle. I don't know why this is the most overlooked item. Now, be it because people have a massive distrust for automotive service centers across the nation, or they just have this gut feeling that you shouldn't replace or fix anything until it breaks. However, this particular item is not something you want to wait to fail before you fix it. Let's talk about why. So before we get into the actual details on necessarily how to replace it on the Chrysler 3.6 liter Pentastar, we're going to talk about what a serpentine belt does. Now, I've been in the automotive industry for many, many years, and I know that there is a confusion between your external serpentine belt and most motors internal timing belt or timing chain setup. These are two different things. We're not getting into timing. We're not getting into internals. We are just simply talking about the externals on your motor. Here's what a serpentine belt drives. The serpentine belt in most vehicles that are on the road is gonna control your power steering. If the belt breaks or it fails, you lose the ability to steer the vehicle properly. That doesn't sound like fun, right? The second thing in just about every vehicle that this serpentine belt is gonna control is your alternator. Now your alternator is the generating device for electricity that powers everything that's under the hood of the vehicle and keeps the battery charged so that the next time you wanna go use it, it'll actually start for you. So losing the use of your alternator could actually cause some damage to your battery and damage to your electrical system. Another item that the serpentine belt usually covers is your AC compressor. Now, I don't know about you, but we live out here in the desert and it gets upwards of 120 to 125 degrees in the summer. I really don't want to lose my air conditioning ability in the vehicle simply for my own personal health. Well, those are the three things that a lot of people know that a serpentine belt covers and three things that can cause some damage should the belt break. But there is a fourth thing that 99% of these belts turn on the front of your vehicle that is so vital to the operation of your engine that if it were to break could cause catastrophic failure. Do you know what that fourth item is? The fourth item that 99% of these belts that are on engines turn is your water pump. Now your water pump is the primary component in your engine cooling system. Now inside of the engine, your combustion chambers could easily run hundreds and hundreds of degrees, if not thousands, depending upon how hard you're pushing your engine. 
Your cooling system is designed to run liquid through the engine so that it can keep the base unit of your motor running on an average of about 200 degrees, which is your safety range. Now, if the water pump were to stop turning, that fluid stops flowing. And usually within minutes, if not seconds, that engine is running so hot that the internals start to expand so quickly that you could actually cause an engine failure. And I don't just mean it shuts off. I mean, you could throw a piston, you could bend a rod, you could actually cause the situation where the motor is done and you need to replace it. So most of these cost about 50, 60 bucks. Most engines cost anywhere from six to $10,000. Personally, I think replacing a $60 part every so often to prevent a $10,000 failure is probably the most important reason to make sure you're looking at your serpentine belt on your vehicle. Like I said, this is the number one most overlooked item in a vehicle. The reason being is because people think if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's not making any noise. It's not giving me any trouble. I don't want to spend the extra money. I'm just here for an oil change. That's perfectly fine. But when a technician uh, on an average is looking at your vehicle, he's going to see and examine your serpentine belt. And if he see th sees things like cracks or excessive wear or any indication that that belt is on its way out, he's going to bring it up to you. Not because he's trying to make extra money off of you, but because he doesn't want to see you stuck on the side of the road without the ability to turn your wheel power your engine, or heaven forbid, with a blown motor because it overheated way too rapidly. So that being said, let's get into the simple easiness of actually replacing this belt and preventing thousands of dollars worth of failures in your motor. At this point in this video, we are going to talk about what is required step-by-step step, to replace the belt on the Pentastar. This is for the guys that want to do it themselves and save a little bit of money. On this particular motor, Chrysler did, didn't necessarily make it super easy. So for those of you that are not mechanically inclined or that feel that this might be too complicated to do on your own, please, by all means, bring it to a service repair center and have a certified technician take a look at the belt. And if it needs to be replaced, believe me, it's worth the fee in order to get this replaced. But like I said, from here on out, we are gonna replace this belt together. So if you're ready, let's get started on the first steps necessary to get the old belt off of the motor. Now the vehicle we're using today is a 2016 Jeep Wrangler. So this particular Pentastar is the newer updated version of the 3.6 liter. Um, first things first that I recommend is get your air intake tube and air box out of the way um it's plastic it's easy it's one little uh hose right here and two little bolts right here it just pulls right out of the way this gives you plenty of access to the front of the motor now if you look down in here you can see that the, most of the belt is actually visible but chrysler decided and i'm guessing for space that they needed to put the alternator on the front of the motor in what I consider the alternator to be backwards. Now, on some of the 3.6 liters in like the Dodge Chargers and uh, Chrysler 300s or whatnot, this is actually oriented back on the inside of the motor. So it's actually a little easier to get to the belt. However, because they put this alternator on backwards in order to properly get this belt off and route the new one on, Unfortunately, we are actually going to have to remove the alternator from the vehicle. So after you get the air box off, next step would be to disconnect the battery so we don't have any power going to the system. All right. So now that you've got everything ready to go, first things first, I always recommend getting the tension off of the belt. So you don't want to start disconnecting or unbolting the alternator with the belt fully tensioned on there because all you're going to be doing is fighting yourself. 
on the tensioner itself. It's a half inch drive in order to actually relieve the tension. It is a hydraulic tensioner. There is a lot of tension on it. So you're gonna have to put some pressure on it, but be safe. As you put pressure on it, it will slowly back itself off and allow you to get the belt off the top of the alternator, just like that. Now that the belt is off the alternator, you can let the tensioner go because our alternator is free, which was the goal of step one. Now we're going to get it unplugged, disconnected, and then we're going to unbolt it and remove the alternator off of here so you can see everything else that's going on. Now that we have the alternator off, you can see we got free access to our belt and to the front of the motor. There are two idler pulleys that are right here. Usually want to check them just to make sure that they are clean, safe, and spinning properly because if they need to be replaced, now is the perfect opportunity to do that since you have everything apart. Um, we're going to go over what this belt wraps around real quick and how it wraps around before we remove the old one off the vehicle. From the alternator down underneath this idler pulley wraps around your power steering pump and then up around your tensioner, down around your crank pulley. Now your crank pulley is the main pulley that actually turns the serpentine belt and all the accessories that are on the vehicle. Next, moving over to the right, the flat part of the belt touches the water pump, and that's what turns your water pump, and then it circles down around back here, which is hard to see because the hoses and stuff are in the way, uh, but that's your AC compressor, and then back around the idler pulley where it wraps around the top of the alternator once again. With everything out of the way, it's actually super easy. We'll just pull it around the power steering pump. We can actually slide the belt up like this, around, and then off the bottom pulley. And that's it. The belt has been removed. In examining the belt that came off, the backside is actually worn way thin. Um, and it's gritty actually which means it is starting to come apart so this was a good time to replace this looking at the actual belt itself i don't know if you can see this on camera but she's starting to crack in multiple different areas now let's cover the topic of how often this should be done okay different parts of this country wears out rubber in different levels like i said we live out in the desert this is actually considered extreme conditions for us out here in the Las Vegas metropolitan area because of how hot it gets in the summer. So stuff like this, which is made out of rubber, breaks down a lot faster out here than it would necessarily break down, let's say, on the northeast part of this country. However, the further north you go and the colder it gets, the more this rubber shrinks and becomes brittle and can actually crack. So what is the recommendation for service interval? Most manufacturers will tell you that this belt needs to be replaced once every 60,000 miles or so. The truth of the matter is, is this belt needs to be replaced once it starts showing signs of wear. It could happen as fast as 20,000 miles of ownership, or it could last 130,000 miles before it actually gets to this point. It's really dependent upon how you maintain the vehicle and the weather conditions that are in your area. But that does not mean that it's something that needs to be overlooked. Like I said, this is an extremely vital component. And when you go to put the belt back on to the vehicle, there is several different theories on where you should start and what you should do. My personal opinion is go around the pulley that is the hardest to get to first. Save the easiest one to get to for last. To me, that just logically makes sense. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you start or where you end, as long as the routing of that belt 
is in the same direction as the way the belt came off, because that is the direction that those pulleys need to spin in order for those individual components to work properly. Now, on most vehicles, there is actually a picture of a belt wiring diagram somewhere under the hood of the vehicle, should you ever need to replace the belt so you can see which direction that it is supposed to go. If there isn't a picture, Google is your absolute best friend. All you got to look up is 2016 Jeep Wrangler Serpentine Belt Routing. And it will immediately pull up a picture that shows you exactly how that belt is supposed to be routed. Of course, the other way to do it, probably the easiest way to do it, is before you take the old belt off, snap a picture of it yourself with your cell phone. We all have one in our pockets. This way you can reference your own picture on exactly how that's supposed to go back together. So that being said, let's get this new belt installed on the Jeep. Now, once done correctly, your belt should basically be ready for the alternator to go inside of it, just like it was when we had taken it all apart. So now, just double checking that the grooves are appropriately on the grooved belts and the flat parts are, or the flat part of the belt is appropriately on the flat pulleys. Now we can reinstall the alternator and put everything back together. Now that the alternator is back in place, now comes the really fun part about replacing a serpentine belt. And that is we got to get enough tension off the tensioner to be able to pull the brand new tight belt over the top of this alternator pulley. Even after 20 years of doing stuff like this, I still manage to cut fingers and to pinch myself from time to time. There is a lot of tension on this belt, which there needs to be in order for everything to be tight. So take your time. Don't get frustrated. Just keep at it until you get it over the pulley. So there you have it, folks. Although there are a few extra steps on the Jeep because the alternator has to come out of the way, it's really not the most complicated thing in the world in order to put back together. So if you have any questions about what we did, hopefully I answered the majority of them. Please don't hesitate to put them in the comments down below or shoot me an email at the link that I provided in the description of this video. In the meantime, folks, please do not disregard the serpentine belt as a maintenance item for your vehicle, especially if you use it off-road. You do not want to get yourself caught in a position where you lose your steering, lose your power, and heaven forbid, overheat and lose the motor. At most repair facilities across this country, they usually only charge between a half an hour to an hour's worth of labor to do it because it doesn't take that long. And like I said, the belt usually falls between 50 to 60 bucks, give or take, depending upon the region or the brand belt that you choose. It's 100% worth the investment, folks. Please do not ignore this particular service item. Like I said, if you have any questions, I look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, my name is Josh. This is Jeeping for Beginners. Stay safe, happy Jeeping, and we will see you next time.